going to go through the same steps in this next problem. The center of the ellipse can be found by looking inside those parentheses there. It will be located at negative 1, 5. We look at our two denominators, and this time the 81 is larger, which is beneath the y fraction. And that tells us we're going to be moving 9 units up and down. So our vertices will be at negative 1, 5, plus or minus 9. And I'm adding this to the y value because that will control up or down. And that tells us the vertices here will be at negative 1, 14 when we add them and negative 1 comma negative 4, which we get when we go 5 minus 9. The endpoints of the minor axis. Again, we're going to be starting at negative 1 comma 5, but the minor axis is going to be in the x direction. And since the square root up above of 36 is 6, we're going to be adding and subtracting 6 from that portion or that coordinate of the center. And so the endpoints will be at, when we add 6, we'll have 5, 5. When we subtract 6, we will have negative 7, 5. To find the foci, we will use that same formula. c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, meaning subtract the denominators. 81 minus 36. Notice it needs to be in this order. If you went 36 minus 81, you'd get a negative value, and c squared can't be negative. So subtracting 81 minus 36, we get 45, and therefore c will equal plus or minus 3 root 5. Since this ellipse is elongated vertically more so than horizontally, we will be moving this 3 root 5 up and down from the center to get to the foci. And the foci will be located at negative 1, 5, plus or minus the 3 root 5 to those y coordinates. Now let's go and actually graph this ellipse. We've already said that it is centered at negative 1, 5. So I've kind of redrawn the x-axis here where the origin isn't centered, so I can fit this on right. We are moving 6 units left and right. And so 6 units to the left takes us to negative 7, 5, and to 5, 5. And up and down, the 9 units takes us up to a height of 14. And down 9, it's going to go a little bit below my grid here, but that's fine. Let me show you there. And let me zoom out just a smidgen. There you go. So here we have our ellipse drawn in. Hopefully that's a half decent job. Now for the 3 root 5, which is the square root of 45, you know the, the square root of 49 is 7. This will just be a little bit under 7, which means just a little bit under 7 up and down tells us right about there and there will be where the two foci are located. Okay, this next problem is not in the standard form, so we've got to begin by putting it in standard form. And the first thing we want to do is group the x's together. Write 7x squared plus 70x, and leave a little blank there. And then group the y terms together, plus 11y squared minus 66y. Leave a blank, and I'm going to move the 197 to the right and make it a negative 197. The next thing I'm going to do is factor out the leading coefficients in front of x squared and y squared. This will give us 7 times x squared plus 10x, leave a blank, plus 11 times, open parentheses, y squared minus 6y, leave a blank, close parentheses, equals negative 197. And then the complete the square process really begins with the cut in half and square part, where we take our 10, cut it in half to a 5, square it to a 25. But that really isn't a 25 we added to the left. It's really 7 times the 25. That's really a 175 we added to the left. So we need to add 175 to the right to balance out that equation. Likewise, we're going to cut the negative 6 and a half to a negative 3 and square that to a 9, but it's not really a 9. It's a 9 times the 11 outside the parentheses. That's really a 99 we added to the left. So we need to add 99 to the right-hand side also. 
whoops. So what we have here is 7 times x plus 5 squared plus 11 times y minus 3 squared equals 77. Now for the ellipse we don't want equals 77, we want equals 1, so we will divide through by 77 on both sides of the equation, and this will give us what we're looking for, x plus 5 quantity squared over 11 plus y minus 3 quantity squared over 7 equals 1. That is our curve in standard form. Now let's graph this. The center is located, as we know, at negative 5, positive 3. So I'll plot that point right there. We see beneath the x squared 11. Now the square root of 11 is just a little bit more than 3. And this is the x fraction, so we're going to go left and right a little bit more than 3. 1, 2, 3, a little bit more right there and then right one, two, three, a little bit more, right about there. The square root of seven, well, let's just call that two and a half-ish, just for bookkeeping purposes. There we go. And we can draw in our curve rather easily. Went off the grid a little bit, but that's okay. So we said the center is at negative five, positive three we moved root 11 left and right. So the vertices will be at negative 5 plus or minus root 11 comma 3. The next thing we want to look at is the endpoints of the minor axis. And the 7 was in the denominator of our equation, so we're going to go root 7 up and down. Those will be located at negative 5 comma 3 plus or minus root 7. And finally, let's find the foci. We know that we can use the equation c squared equals a squared minus b squared. That will become c squared equals 11 minus 7. c squared will equal 4 and c will equal 2. Well, since the major axis is horizontal, we're going to be going two units to the left and right of center, and those will be at nice clean points. We don't have a, a radical in our value of c. So the foci will be located at, well, two to the left of the negative five gives us negative seven comma three, and moving two to the right, we now have negative three comma three.